So one good place to start would be the concept of race itself, I think. Because if you're going to talk about mixed race, then you automatically have to move forward to think about what is race, actually. And, you know, I think the only thing, I mean, the real starting point of that is that race is a cultural construction or a social construction. And it exists because it it helps people understand the world that they're in. Race is a concept that um, changes through time, and it exists because it makes political and economic sense to the people who create it. Mm -hmm. And in the United States, it's um, you know been a concept that's had very powerful political repercussions and economic ones too. As as people grow up in that society and race just becomes a naturalized concept, people end up believing that race really does exist. And so it becomes, it can become part of people's identity, but at its root level, it's simply an identification that people who are, have the ability to benefit from that concept actually impose on other people. But it's interesting to think of that the kind of interaction between race as an identity that someone takes on uh -huh. and an identification that's imposed from the outside. possible for governments to set out the categories that are socially recognized by that government and then um, people to some extent either have to operate within those categories or they have to very obviously and publicly resist those categories. Y bueno, cuando no existían las fronteras, pues éramos un pueblo libre que caminaba para acá y para allá para donde quisiéramos estar, ¿verdad? My name is White Feather, Dan Wabipa. My mother's clan is Eagle Clan. My father's clan is a man clan. I was uh, given my Indian name by a Seneca medicine man who is a wolf clan, so I took his clan. These are clan ways that I'm speaking of, you know, your people had those clan ways also. You know, we had the same marriage policies, we had the same family policies, we had the same family circles. That's what uh, this here is all about. This is about us North American natives coming and giving you guys the welcome that you deserve to come to this land. We've been coming back and forth across this border before this border was even here for millennia, generation upon generation. <laughs> We've traded goods, we've traded our work, we've traded our ways, we've traded our daughters and our sons, and we have, have had this trade, we've had, had this, this uh, traveling going back and forth between us, and those paths are old, those paths are in the mountains, those paths are over the rivers and the streams. We all have a right to this land, this Mother Earth, this America, this Turtle Island. This land that we live in right here, right now, in this valley, in this whole Turtle Island, this is us. That's who we are. All these brown faces out here, we're not immigrants. We were created here by the Creator. We have our creation stories that put us right here. I'm not an immigrant. I'm from here. I think that it, it, it's had several effects. I guess starting from the top down, it's allowed the rest of the population to think that these are others and thereby different kinds of people that, that can be kind of put on reservations or you know, otherwise marginalized from mainstream society. And um, you know, I think you can see the kind of exoticness that is kind of blended with an indigenous identity as part of a, 
part of this whole marginalization process too. You know, they're the exotic other. They truly are. And so that's one effect. The, the effect from the point of view of the people who are in that category, though, I think it is that their quality of life deteriorates, both because economically it's hard for them to do the things that demonstrate economic success, and so their social worth declines as well. So they're kind of between a rock and a hard place. They have to overachieve in order to be thought of as good people in that society. This was an outright attack against um, indigenous people without a doubt, but against um, Mexican quote-unquote immigrants people have come here regardless of where they're from, whether they're indigenous or not, but they're here and they've come here to, and they've worked hard, they've tried to make a way for themselves. They're not here just trying to be a burden on the society. And I don't think, I think that, um, I think that's what this, this law has pointed them out as. What, one way or another, you, you, we try to teach ourselves not to stereotype people. And now this law has completely has been put out there in the forefront and there's a lot of ignorant people who are going to believe that Mexican people who came here who were not born in the United States or from Mexico or um, from the lower, um, below the borders, whether indigenous or not indigenous, they, they have now a stereotype that these people are lazy, that they're a burden on our society because they're ignorant and they believe what they're told. Most of these people don't have, haven't taken the time to get to know any of them. Most of these people haven't taken the time to understand what that this how this law affects people because they exist in that luxury that um, that doesn't allow them to see the real world that surrounds them and what makes a real world this is about people and the control of the land it's the same reason why the problems with the reservations happen it's the same reason why indians were put on reservations and it's all about protecting their their resources protecting the resources that they've stolen from indigenous people and now it's it's changed because you have a, the way that the society is run um, is protecting their resources. They're seeing um, quote unquote immigrants. There's, but this law was definitely aimed at Mexicans. It wasn't aimed at any other large minority group. It was aimed at Mexicans, but they're seeing them as a problem. When in a lot of ways, Mexicans are the backbone of our, of our society. I believe uh, native rights are native rights uh, no matter which country you come from, you know, and I believe that uh, before the borders were set down, uh, natives uh, 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 north and south traded through Canada, through uh, uh, what was now known as Canada, through what is now known as Mexico, and, uh, uh, and we just had no borders. We had uh, 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 areas that we respected of uh, other people's culture, where their hunting grounds were, where they made camp and stuff like that, and we asked permission to cross if we were to go somewhere. And that's the only kind of uh, borders that we had was respect. And so, uh, and this uh, uh, carries right along with the respect, and, and, and the, the Mexicans are uh, uh, Native Americans. And, and the, the, the Mexicans, Mexicans are uh, uh, Native, Native Americans. Americans. We are not immigrants, we are indigenous. We are indigenous Native Americans to this land. First Nation Aboriginal people.